and welcome to the 2024 Pan American Cup. And we have the women's singles match for third and fourth place starting right now. Thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Jimmy Butler and I'm here with 1996 Paralympic gold medalist for Team USA, Tal Leibowitz. Tal, great to have you here. Thank you, Jimmy. Really good to be here. And it's great to have all of you here with us here in Corpus Christi, Texas. So Lily Jung from Team USA. Ranked number 45 in the world. Mojung, Canada, ranked number 83 in the world. That's good. Mojung uses hips out on her forehand side, which is the black side of the rubber. But watch her serve right now. She's using the red side, which is her inverted side. Then she flips the racket and goes to the black hips out side on her forehand. So anytime Jung serves, You'll see her serve with that red side, which is her inverted side, and that's her backhand side, but it gets more spin than the pips. So she serves with the red inverted side, and then immediately after the serve, you'll see her flip it right now. And then she plays her backhand with the red inverted side and the pips, which is the black rubber on the forehand. Yeah, this will be a very interesting match, uh, Jimmy. It's a really close matchup. Lily Jung, tall, the greatest American-born athlete to ever play. No one's ever reached 22 in the world. Lily Jung has. So you're looking at one of the greats out there. Yeah, she's incredible winning at the, uh, at one point she got the bronze medal and I believe that was the World Cup. Unbelievable. Yes, she did. She made the semifinals of the World Cup singles. That's the first time any American born athlete has ever gone that far in a World Cup singles competition. And it's true. She likes to play quick and fast against Mozang. She's probably going to want to slow down a little bit on the first ball. I think that's what Amy was doing in that last match. And there's a nice serve there, tall by Jung. Catching Mo Jung short to the forehand, heavy side <laughs> chop. Zhang dumped that ball into the net. So we've got two Jungs playing here, Tall. So we may have to decide who we're going to go by the first name and who we're going to go by the last name. First Maybe we use both first names. Maybe that could be easier. And I agree. So you've got Lily serving. So close. And Mo receiving. How about that? Good, a good long serve. A little bit slow. But in tall, both of these athletes, their strength is their backhand. It's not that their forehand is not good as well, but they're extra good on the backhand side. And there you see Lily testing the forehand side of Mo there, avoiding a backhand to backhand rally at that point. But you will see them go backhand to backhand at times, strength against strength. There was one right there. Mo's been playing incredible this tournament. They played earlier in the WTT event, and it was five games where Lily won that match. It was a very good match. And Mo Jung wins the first game and leads this match one game to zero.
Now let's look at a couple replays from that first game. There, Lily catching Jung there on that short serve. That ball went off the top of the net. And now we look at the placement charts for game one. So there, Lily Jung really serving a lot to the middle quadrant of the table against Mo Jung. And Lily putting most of her winning shots into the body, into the middle of the table there of Mo Jung. So tall as we start this second game, you know, I've told the viewers a lot throughout this tournament. When these athletes first start these matches out, you know, they're not used to each other's serves in the beginning of matches, so you'll see a lot of unforced errors by the receiver, and also a lot of popping up the serves by the receiver. The rallies then are usually short, and as the match goes on, the rallies get better and better. And the reason is, each of these athletes only has so many serves, so as the games go on, you start seeing more and more of their serves. You get used to them, and when you see a serve a second, third, and fourth time, you start receiving it better. See, that was a pop-up right there by Jung, and an easy put-away by Mo. I gotta get used to going first names here. First time I've had to do it the whole tournament. We've, we haven't had two of the same names yet. Yes, that, that ball is so spinny. And, and Mo is just getting heavy spin with the pips when she's starting from the middle. She's starting from the forehand. It doesn't seem to have as much spin. There's that serve of Lily. She had problems with it last match, Tall. That serve was slow. It was high, and it didn't have good length. Yeah, I think the serve really needs a little more speed. That's when it's a little bit slow. And I've been telling the viewers, there's three qualities of a good deep serve. You want it low, you want it fast, and you want it to have good length. And good length means you want it to land as close to the end line as possible. And she had none of those qualities on that last deep serve. And to do that, Jimmy, you probably have to start with the first bounce closer to the end line while you're serving. Great rally by both athletes. That's the best rally of the match thus far. There's that spin you're talking about, Tall. Lily with a soft to medium speed opening. Wasn't a lot of speed on it, but it was the spin that got Mo to miss that off the table. When you watch table tennis from home, it's difficult to understand how much spins on the ball. As tall as you know, when you're out there playing or even us here sitting right near the court, you can really see the amount of spin on the ball and how difficult it is to deal with. Yeah, Jimmy, you see those forehands that Lily missed in the previous point. She needs to add a little bit more spin to the balls, a little bit flat. And that also happens when you can't brush the ball as much. Sometimes it's hard to get it on the table. Let's see if Lily can come up with a good serve here. That was a good receive there by Mo. A lot of force on that banana flip. Great middle ball. Yeah, great job by Lily aiming that backhand opening into the body of Mo. And that's a great receive there by Lily. Lily's such a good receiver, tall. She's been good her whole career. She reminds me a lot of. American Kanak Cha on the male side. They're both so good at receiving serves. They read the spin very well, and 
that are very effective coming in with that banana flip, pressuring their opponent. Yeah, that's key. If you can really serve well and receive well, it's a big, big part of table tennis. Well, it's the first two things you do in every point. You're either serving or re receiving. Oh, great job there by Mo. Dealing with those Lily forehand attacks. Yeah, Lily needed to put that one into the middle. Sorry, sorry. That ball clips the top of the net, and Mo Jung comes out and wins game two, 11 to eight, and now leads this match two games to zero. And let's look at a couple replays of that last game. Nice forehand there, but that pips out on her forehand, smacking that Lily Jung loop. And now we've got the shot placement chart for game two. That's a really good middle ball there, Jimmy. Spinny back and opening directly to Lily's middle. Very good. So with Lily Jung ranked 45 in the world, trailing Mo Jung from Canada, ranked 83 in the world. Lily down 0-2 in games. And now a tough start to this game. These bronze medal matches are sometimes tough because you take a loss, you're trying to get in the final, and then you've got to play for the bronze medal. It's not easy to do that. I totally agree, Tull. I've played a number of matches where I have to play right after I lose, whether it was a league match in Sweden. I've had to do that sometimes in the North American Championships, and I always had a hard time with that as well. that's not having a difficult time with it right now is Mo Jung of Canada. She is in a nice rhythm. There's the speed on that backhand side of Mo. That was a beautiful backhand there by Mo. That was a nice down the line forehand loop into the wide backhand of Mo by Lily, and Mo handled it nicely. Oh, good try, but Jimmy, Lily's going to have to do something different here uh, to be able to come back. That was a rare backhand flat hit she tried there. Rare you see Lily flat hit a backhand. She's mainly a spinner. At previous point, she actually went for a backhand smack there at the end. There's the heavy top spin of Mo. Lily missing that ball off the table. It wasn't the speed that got Lily, it was the top spin. And Mo's gonna run away with this game. We are 
reaching garbage time tall. Oh. oh, that was amazing. And you'll see stuff like that in garbage time. And when I say garbage time, when a game gets out of hand like this, you'll see some funny stuff going on from the athletes. They'll sometimes take crazy shots. I think Lily's got to try to play a little bit more safe and put balls on the table. And a nice rally there by Mo Jung to win that third game and to take a commanding three, to game, three games to zero lead in this match. Let's look at a couple replays of that last game. There was one of the miss serves of Lily. And now we go to the placement charts for game three. some motivation or something to push herself. Good. good spin. Good spin by Lily. Nice receive by Lily there. She took that ball off the bounce and loaded it up with top spin. Sorry, sorry. That ball hit the top of the net. You heard Mo say sorry in table tennis. It's considered etiquette to apologize when you get a lucky ball. Nets and edges are considered lucky ball in this lucky balls in this sport. You know, you don't see the tennis players apologize so much when they get them, but it's just kind of etiquette, a tradition in this sport to apologize when you get one. Jimmy, Lily's playing better here in those first points because she's giving time pressure and she's being aggressive but safe at the same time. Oh, great shots there by Lily. She saved a net within that rally, and then you saw that beautiful Lily Jung backhand to win that point. It's a great point. better rallies of the match. Lily able to save another net within that rally, but Mo ultimately winning that point. Wow, what a backhand by Mo. Took it off the bounce, perfect location right into the body of Lily. of these athletes so good at playing unforced air free table tennis they both tend to build up each point you don't see a lot of mistakes like you just saw right there missed receives happen to everyone but both of these athletes are really good making their opponent earn each point Good. 
We're just trying to play a little bit closer with more spin and a little bit more safe. I think it's paying off. Great receive by Lily. Oh, oh that's wow. just too good I'm by Mo. That was a really good receive by Lily, but Mo just took that backhand off the bounce and ripped it cross court. Now this match is heating up for the first time. We're seeing a lot of good stuff going on out there. And Lily has her first game point. And Lily Jung wins game four, 11 to seven, and trails this match three games to one. And let's look at a couple replays of that last game. Here's the Mo Jung serve. And one of the rare unforced errors early in rallies that you see from both of these great athletes. And now we look at the placement charts. They're both athletes really serving similar places during that game. Lily taking a lot of her winning shots into the Mo Jung backhand. Jimmy, I think Lily really played well that last game, and if she can continue to do this, we might be in for, for a long match. Well, Tall, Lily really looked flat those first few games. Let's say the first three games, and that last game is the first time we really saw her really digging in and putting up a big fight. And that's not to take anything away from the way Mo played those first three games. Credit Mo for coming out and playing so strong the first three games. But that was not the Lily we're used to watching. But that last game, really the start of this game, you now she's moving quicker. Seems to have a little more fight in her. Yeah, that's a good point, Jimmy. Uh, Mo has been playing really exceptional uh, this entire tournament. Not easy to battle against her. She's playing very well, and she has a very tough style. Mo Jung defeated world number 11, Adriana Diaz in the quarterfinals, knocked out the number one seed for losing in the semifinal to world number 38, American Amy Wong. There's a nice serve there by Mo, getting Lily to dump that ball into the net. She needs to use the forehand on that, Lily. When she gets that cut to the middle, she missed a couple of those, about four this match. We've got a timeout from Jung, Lily Jung. Okay, good timeout. Jimmy, what do you think that Lily's got to do to come back and sort of battle this match and maybe win this game? Well, that was good timing. We got the music on. The timeout.
slow spinny openings low to the net are so effective in this game. And there's one by Lily. So you don't always need to open with a lot of speed and pace in table tennis. Sometimes those slow, slow to medium opening spinny loops like that one right there. Very effective. You get a lot of times you'll get your opponent to miss them outright, and when they don't, usually they don't play them back with a lot of speed. They're not easy to deal with. There's another one right there. That time Mo dealt with it beautifully. Great job there by Mo. A nice forehand and then a finishing backhand. Got a little bit of reverb here. Mo Jung has match point. Oh, he spinning down the line, fantastic. And a great way to finish the match for Mo Jung as she defeats Lily Jung four games to one and secures the third position here at the 2024 Pan American Cup women's singles bronze medal match. And so we will have the men's singles final coming up at seven o'clock. Here's a couple replays from that last game. Ben Singles final will start at 7 p.m. Now we look at the placement charts for that game five.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2024 Pan American Cup Men's Singles Final. Edward Lee of Canada, ranked number 183 in the world, versus Nicholas Burgos from Chile, the top seed at number 51 in the world. Thank you for joining us here in Corpus Christi, Texas. My name is Jimmy Butler. As we begin this first game, and Lee comes out emotional, winning the first three points. Oh, that's a beautiful backhand there by Lee. And he is fired up to start this match. player on both sides of the ball. He will come at you with force. Likes to play with speed. And he loves the deep serve. He started this game serving deep, and there we see another one. So Burgos is aware of that. Lee loves to use that deep serve. And there's a great, heavy side chop short serve. And the story of this first game is the service game of Lee giving Burgos fits. Well. Ooh. Actually ran into the net post there. But they're gonna give him that point right there. At the net post. Which is usually a no-no. The umpires let that slide. And it seems like we just started. And Lee has his first game point. Game one, and Lee three, comes seven, out two. in impressive fashion. Storming to an 11-2 first game win. Let's look at a couple replays of that last game. Here's the serve of Burgos. That ball goes right into the net. And there's where he hit that net post right there. No harm, no foul, according to the umpires. They let it slide. And now we look at the placement charts for game one. I got After losing 11 out of the first 13 points in game one, it's got to feel good for Burgos to win the first two points of the second game. Make that the first three points. And when you go on a run like Lee did that first game and you win 11 to two, it's so difficult to keep winning points, especially against a guy ranked higher than you. Yeah, there's a fortunate point one there. 
by Lee. So when I played out there, anytime I'm having a bad run against me, I try to stay calm and I know that things can change in a hurry like they have for Burgos this game. Now winning four out of the last five points after that 11-2 run against him. Two, four. Players go in and out of rhythm throughout a match. Oftentimes, multiple what else? spells. <laughs> Three, four, four. Like it, right? That's a great point one there by Burgos because that deep serve from Lee was vicious down the line. It had speed. It was low to the net. It had length. Burgos did a great job of reacting and just getting it on the table. Six, three. After that ferocious start in that first game from Lee, we're starting to see a number of unforced errors from Lee to start the second game. A oh, great job by Lee. Covering so much ground, retrieving all those balls from Burgos. Working so hard to win that point. Oh, that was a great serve. Five, that ball was loaded with side spin. It was side under, but it was the amount of side spin that impressed me from the angle I'm looking at. There's another deep serve of Lee. Wins the point outright. He's so good at the deep serve and so willing to use it more than any other athlete we've watched this competition. Deep serve really puts pressure on your opponent, forces him to attack, also keeps him honest from coming in on those short serves and banana flicking you so much. Seven, That's a nice short serve there by Burgos. So we're seeing a little bit of a service war going on out there by both athletes. Come on. Yeah. Six, eight. The receive is one of the most difficult parts of table tennis of the amount of spin the server creates. Let's watch this serve of Lee right here. Let's see, Burgos popped it up just a little bit over the net, and that's enough to have to deal with a Lee loop that you just saw there. So you've got to keep those balls low to the net, or you've got to attack them with force. And that ball into the net. Another good serve by Lee to tie this game up eight all. That was a really good receive by Lee. Can't get much better than that. Burgos did a great job of reacting and winning that point. Sometimes it's the slow play that will win you points as well. That time Lee backed off and really just kind of shovel blocked that shot. And it was so off pace, it threw Burgos off, who had taken a half step back from the table. Oh, great point. Burgos will have game point.
What a backhand down the line by Lee to deuce this game up. That ball was near the white corner of that forehand side of Burgos. Can't place it much better than that. Oh, what a point by Lee. They go backhand to backhand. And then Lee with an acrobatic forehand, who now has his own game point. And Lee with the deep serve to win the second game and takes a two game to zero match lead over top seed Nicholas Burgos of Chile. And let's look at a couple replays that last game. There was that great rally and that great finishing forehand there by Lee. We go to the placement charts for game two. That was a very nice looking deep serve there by Lee. Great job by Burgos just reacting, but really an unforced error there by Lee. goes in and out of rhythm, but what he does stay consistent with is putting pressure on you. He's really coming in to attack just about everything. There's another unforced error, but that's exactly what Lee wanted. He got the step around was going to aim that forehand right into the body of Burgos. Just missed it off the top of the net. Oh, great serve. Four, two. Burgos with a number of unforced errors. Losing his rhythm. Five, four, five. Nice. Burgos creates a lot of top spin from his backhand side, and even though those balls didn't have a lot of pace, they were loaded with spin. Oh, that was a good serve by Lee. 
Had oh. everything he wanted. Another unforced error. So Lee really losing to himself these last few points. Burgos doing a good job this game. Putting the ball on the table, not taking too much risk. Recognizing Lee's out of rhythm. Five, time Burgos seven, took a risk and missed it. These players play slow to medium speed with a lot of topspin. They can do that pretty much all day. They're not going to miss those very much. It's when they go for the kind of speed you just saw Burgos try. That's called a risky shot. It's risky because it's much more difficult to make and you're much more likely to miss it. Oh, great serve by Lee. The service game of Lee giving Burgos fit so far this match. That was a heavy side chop, and Burgos dumped it towards the bottom of the net. the third game up at eight apiece. Oh. Nice received by Burgos. Good serve. Lee had the exact shot he wanted, but we've seen him do that a number of times this game. Making the unforced error, not able to finish what he started. This game's so important for Burgos. Another game point. Oh! Ten, ten. That's a big mistake there by Burgos. Had a chance to win that game. They don't get much easier than that kind of shot, and he blew it. And now Lee. Takes his first game point in this third game. Oh! Edward oh! Lee comes back from an 8 10 deficit and runs off four points in a row and leads this men's singles final match three games to zero. Look at a couple replays that last game. And there's the unforced air by Burgos leading 10 to nine. And now the placement charts for that game three.
Zero. 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 Great deep serve there by oh. Lee. Burgos missed the ball completely. Oh. How good was that? A textbook perfect step around forehand drill to the wide backhand of Burgos. Got a timeout from Burgos. Gotta get dip. Gotta get dip. Gotta get dip. Gotta get dip. just keeps coming at you over and over again. We saw him go out of rhythm several times in this match and make a bunch of unforced errors, but he just keeps coming. And there's a beautiful forehand step around loop. That ball was low, had pretty good speed, and great placement to the wide forehand of Burgos. Very quick on his feet. To be able to step around that quickly is a talent. Uh, 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 uh. Five, four, three, six. Going into this match, I would have thought Burgos had a sizable advantage backhand to backhand, but Lee has not only held his own. Look at that one. Pretty amazing shots there by Burgos. But went for an extra crazy shot there at the end. And Lee getting close. Victory here. Four, it's so easy to relax just one or two percent when you're 
getting a lead on your opponent, especially this big of a lead. So. Uh, play! Oh. He's gonna do everything he can to keep his intensity at 100%. Great point. Nine, five. Let's watch that again. Here's the end of that point. He gets around on the forehand, and then Burgos just says, get it out of here. good idea to do earlier in the match. That receive right there, because Lee likes to step around a lot. And there was nobody home on that receive. Timeout, Lee. And Lee's gonna take a timeout. What a great serve coming out of the timeout by Lee. And he has his first match point for the title. And that's a good way to let your opponent back into a game. Blowing two receives in a row there, but Lee still in a commanding position to finish this match off right here and now with two serves. And Edward Lee is the 2024 Pan American Cup men's singles champion winning in straight games and here's a couple replays from that last game what a performance from canada's edward lee just running away with that match over top seed in world number 51 Nicholas Burgos of Chile. Congratulations to Edward Lee and to Canadian Table Tennis for an impressive win and title.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2024 Pan American Cup Women's Singles Final between world number 38, Amy Wong of the USA and world number 23, Bruna Takahashi from Brazil. My name is Jimmy Butler. Thanks everyone for joining us here in Corpus Christi, Texas. players played last in the Pan American Championships where Amy Wong won deuce in the seventh game. One, four. And Takahashi had a match point in that game, led 10 to nine before Amy Wong won it. 12 to 10. serve was a let serve they'll replay it that was a nice and nasty side spin banana flip there by Takahashi 
It wasn't the pace that got Wong, it was the amount of side topspin on it. Oh, that's a beautiful forehand inside out loop down the line by Takahashi. She has such great technique on her forehand side. It's a little stroke, turns her body and waist so well. And there is what Wong can do to you. She doesn't only spin the ball, she's very good at flat hitting it. Let's look at that again. That's a forehand smash right there. Notice Takahashi had trouble judging it because she was expecting a loop. So Wong very good at spinning as well as flat hitting, especially on that forehand side. Oh, that was a good receive by Wong. Takahashi recovered nicely. And then what a finish right into the body of Wong. And that's a great job by Takahashi, able to reloop that ball. Wong kept it so low to the net. in a nice rhythm to start this first game. Not making unforced errors out there, making Wong earn everything. There's the backhand of Wong and Takahashi, both of them so strong from that side of the table. Takahashi did a great job of keeping that ball low to the net. Loaded it up with spin. Wasn't a lot of pace on that loop, but it won her the point. Oh, great reaction there by Takahashi off the forehand smash of Wong. Let's look at it again. Here's that flat hit of Wong, and then Takahashi does one of her own. And Bruna Takahashi comes out and wins the first game, 11 to five. And she leads this women's singles final, one game to zero. We look at a couple replays of that last game. There's the Takahashi short serve to the forehand of Wong. Here's a backhand to backhand rally. Look at the placement charts for that first game. Both athletes working the short forehand of each other on their serves. Takahashi playing a lot into the middle and wide forehand of Wong on her winning shots. What a great start to this match for Takahashi. She played unforce air-free table tennis that first game and really put a lot of pressure on Wong. Oh, what a backhand by Takahashi. She is so sharp right now. Wong out of rhythm. That was almost 
Nice a frustration received there by Wong. She went for a big shot there. And that's a great job by Wong, settling down, trying to get that ball on the table and build a rally. Netball frustrated Wong. underspin on that high toss serve. And it's really kept Wong from being able to come in with that aggressive banana flip she's so good at on the receive. And this game is a formality. Wong ready to get it over with. Go back to her corner. Takahashi comes out and wins the second game easily, 11 to one. Look at a couple replays from that last game and there's that net ball that frustrated Wong. And there's the Takahashi heavy, short, underspin serve, which has really kept Wong from using that trademark banana flip she's so good at. Now we look at the placement charts for that last game. So what a rhythm and what a start to this match. For Takahashi. She is making no unforced errors. Really playing with aggression. That serve, it is so heavy and so effective. Really the only thing Wong can do with it at this point in the match is to just try to push it back. And there's a great backhand to backhand rally, this time Wong coming out on top. She desperately needs, needs to win a rally or two like that to find her rhythm and get some confidence. That was a nice receive by Takahashi. Dealing with that deep serve into her body from Wong. That was really a good serve by Takahashi. From my angle, I thought that was heavy, heavy chop. But Wong thought so also, and it popped up a little bit. Good job by Wong. I think the first step of this stage in the match is she's got to just get those receives on the table. And if she's got to cut them deep, that's okay also. 
She's got to get into the point. And she's not confident using her banana flip because the Takahashi serve is so heavy. So just get it on the table, try to make it low to the net and get into the rally. Oh, beautiful finish there by Takahashi. That ball popped up a little bit on Wong. Nice opening loop there by Takahashi. She got a lot of force on it. Wong caught the net on the reaction. And there's that banana flip Wong is so good at. Takahashi that time put her serve into the backhand of Wong. She hasn't really done the whole match and Wong dealt with it quite easily. That's a fortunate break for Wong. That serve got away from her and was really high. And Takahashi with a rare unforced error this match. Oh, great reaction there by Takahashi. you Wong is going to remember that and next time try to place that ball more to the middle forehand of Takahashi and good job by Wong just cut that serve whether you do it short or you do it deep get it on the table and get yourself into the rally that ball did not stay low to the net Takahashi able to fool Wong with the spin. Thought it was heavy, but actually didn't have as much spin as Wong thought. She popped it up. Relatively easy finish for Takahashi. Oh, another good reaction from Takahashi. Wong's got to find the middle and the body of Takahashi when she tries to play those shots with force. Oh, beautiful backhand by Wong. Great job by Wong getting that receive on the table. She popped it up a little bit, but the most important thing is get it on the table and make Takahashi earn every point. And that's okay. Put that receive on the table. Right now, the only thing she can do is push it back. That gives her a chance to get into the rally. That time she missed that forehand reloop. She's doing a much better job of receiving that serve. Oh, that's just a great shot there by Takahashi. And Amy Wong hangs in there and wins that third game, 11 to nine. Takahashi still playing with a good rhythm, but Wong started to find her rhythm a little bit that game and hung on and now trails this match two games to one. And let's look at a couple replays. There's a miss by Takahashi. Warranted an emotional reaction from her. And now we look at the placement charts for that third game. Takahashi serving almost everything with that high toss, heavy underspin serve to Wong's forehand. And Takahashi putting her winning shots to that wide Wong forehand, staying away from her backhand. And Wong working more of the middle and backhand side of Takahashi on her winning shots. Well, great job by Wong, hanging in and winning that third game because Wong has been under a lot of pressure due to the aggression and great play of Takahashi this match.
That ball hit the edge, but great opening, aiming to the body of Takahashi, and then that finishing loop. Touch the edge there. So good shot placement by Wong, these last two points. That was a really good receive by Wong. She kept that ball low to the net and short. That time she read the Takahashi serve well and got kind of a easy win there. Oh, good angle by Takahashi out to the wide forehand of Wong. That's just too good. Oh, and Wong with a beautiful angle of her own to the wide forehand of Takahashi. Wow, that serve was lined up perfectly. Wong was not ready for it at all, but it missed. Another good receive by Wong, but a better shot by Takahashi to win that point. And there's great shot location by Wong, opening up into the forehand body of Takahashi, staying away from that backhand middle side. There's a net by Wong. Motion from her. She's not happy about that net. We talk about playing to the middle of athletes. We talk about two middle locations their backhand middle and their forehand middle. So we cut it up into two different areas. And then Wong plays to the backhand middle of Takahashi. Takahashi's had some amazing reactions, but when Wong plays to the forehand middle, she has a lot more success. Takahashi frustrated this game just like Wong was frustrated in that second game. And this is becoming a formality. Takahashi playing with a lot of aggression and frustration, really cranking every ball right now. And there's another crank you don't normally see from her. That's a 9-4 crank when you're down 9-4. to four. That's an angry loop right there. Oh. Amy Wong comes out and ties this women's singles final up. Two games apiece. Well, let's look at a couple replays that last game. There's a nice forehand down the line opening by Wong. And the big backhand of Takahashi. Now we look at the placement charts for game four. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've just joined us, we are tied two games apiece at the 2024 Pan American Cup Women's Singles Final. And this is turning out to be a great match.
Takahashi won the first two games, Wong the last two games. top of the net and you know that's frustrating to Takahashi she dealt with a lot of them the last game and great serve there by Takahashi loading it up that's her trademark serve heavy heavy underspin short to the forehand off that high toss serve Serve and follow there by Wong. That was a pretty good receive there by Takahashi, but Wong judged that perfectly and just smothered it off the bounce. This match starting to heat up. Both athletes starting to find their rhythm at the same time. Oh, what a receive by Wong. We haven't seen her step around and do that. This whole match, she's been forced to receive with her forehand. And what a backhand flip for a winner. Hey, boom. Boom, hey, boom. Oh, great receive by Takahashi. Loaded it up with side spin. And that's a really good receive there. Wong doing a much better job of judging these serves from Takahashi, reading the spin much, much better. And that's a great time for a deep serve from Takahashi, recognizing Wong. Started to get used to that short forehand serve. That caught Wong off guard. Oh, how about that serve? Takahashi dumped it near the bottom of the net. And Wong with the exact same service combination as Takahashi, that time serving into the middle and deep, but Takahashi with a nice receive. Good job by Wong, keeping that receive low. Causing an unforced error by Takahashi. Oh, another deep serve, and it was lined up perfectly. That let serve helped Wong. She was in a lot of trouble there. That ball hit the top of the net once again. Frustrating Takahashi. Takahashi catches the edge there. Let's out some emotion. She's had so many against her. And a nice receive by Takahashi there. Great job by Takahashi, keeping her composure after that net frustrated her and winning the next two points. Go! Oh, what a serve by Takahashi. This time deep into the Wong backhand. Go! Takahashi. Wins the fifth game, 11 to seven, going on a four point run.
look at a couple replays that last game. There's that ball that caught the edge and the emotion from Takahashi. And there's that great deep serve into the backhand of Wong. She hasn't done that the whole match up to that point. So great job by Takahashi in the service game there at the end, changing things up and really throwing Wong off guard. Now we look at the placement charts for that last game. Nice start to this game by Wong. She had a minute to think about it. And she decided to go deep into the middle of Takahashi to start out. Takahashi fired up. Showing a lot of emotion. These last five points. that heavy short serve to the forehand by Takahashi. Oh, how good is that? Takahashi has found a rhythm, not only with her game, but ever since she's gotten emotional, she's been playing better. No! So we're going to see her vocal each and every point the rest of this game because she's fired up. And when you're fired up and things are going your way, why change? Great job by Wong coming out of the timeout with a plan on that short serve to her forehand. Got that banana flip in to win the point. And another great receive by Wong. You know they talked about the receive coming out of that timeout and Wong executed that plan perfectly. Now Wong on a three-point run. There's another net ball going against Takahashi. And that's really what's fired her up this match. All these net balls against her. She started getting pumped up and emotional.
Even on the let serve, you see her slapping that ball away. So she's playing with a lot of emotion right now. Great job by Wong, staying calm. You know, when someone's screaming every point, it can sometimes rattle you. But Wong is not rattled. She's staying calm. There, Takahashi wins that point. And we hear those vocal cords again. and edges against Takahashi, an unusual amount. I can't remember seeing this much go against someone in a match. There's a fault. So clearly getting into her head. And that serve was poorly executed by Takahashi. She's clearly frustrated by all these nets and edges going against her. Amy Wong wins the sixth game, 11 to six. And we are one minute away from a game seven in the 2024 Pan American Cup Women's Singles Final. Here's a replay of that last game. and the placement charts. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for game seven of this women's singles final. It's been back and forth. Takahashi won the first two games. Wong won the second two games. Takahashi went up 3-2. Wong ties it at 3-all, and here we go. Oh, great receive by Wong. Takahashi tried to test the short backhand of Wong. And you can be sure you're going to see Takahashi either go to the short forehand or deep to the middle right here. I've seen Takahashi. She's going to play with that kind of fire the rest of this game. And so you've got two opposite kind of players when it comes to emotion. They're both fired up to win this game. But Wong shows very little emotion. Keeps a poker face out there. Win or lose, Takahashi. Very emotional right now. That time Takahashi caught the top of the net there. Another net. 
This time by Wong. And Takahashi has got to gain her composure. She lost it at the end of that last game. It kind of felt like all those nets fired her up there for a while and she started playing better. But then it got to her at the end of that last game. Caught the top of the net from Takahashi. So we've seen three nets in a row. Two by Takahashi, one by Wong. That serve went a little high by Wong and Takahashi punished it. Takahashi's vocal cords are getting louder and louder. Each point one. Great receive by Wong. <coughs> Stepping around and getting that beautiful right, right, banana flip in she's so good at. Right, she's got to watch for a deep serve here from Takahashi. Another good receive by Wong, this time using her forehand, reading the spin well, keeping it short and relatively low to the net. Great job by Wong to tie this game up at 5 all. And there's a great receive from Takahashi, jamming Wong into her body. on the serve and receive battle these last few points. No! It's game sevens, pressure packed. And you've seen the rallies slow to a halt and it's mainly a serve and receive battle right now. Ball caught the top of the net from Takahashi. Wong was able to save it, but then Takahashi won the point. Six, eight. There's another serve, receive, and miss. So we haven't really seen a rally this whole game. Another short rally, and Wong hanging in there. <coughs> and now Takahashi takes a timeout. Tá bem? Tá, tá excelente. Tá trabalhando com qualidade. Sempre que tu põe qualidade, tu dá um tempo para encaixar a bola, tá ótimo. Entendeu? Só não entra na pilha de querer finalizar rápido. Se tiver boa, se tiver ótimo, tranquilo, tá? Mas sempre respira. And here we go. Wong with the serve. Down a point. Takahashi comes out of the timeout with two beautiful plays and has her first match point. That was a nice 
Nice receive there by Wong into the body of Takahashi. point. Left. Nine, ten. And Bruno Takahashi yeah. is the 2024 Pan American Cup women's singles champion and what a match 11-9 in the seventh and here's a couple replays from that last game Congratulations to Bruna Takahashi and to Brazilian Table Tennis for a fantastic win here at the 2024 Pan American Cup.
Good evening everybody and welcome to the World Ceremony for the 2024 Pan Am Cup. We would like to thank everybody for joining us, whether are here in person or back home on YouTube live stream. We had an amazing three days of competition here at the American Bank Corpus Christi, Texas, USA. First, I'd like to welcome our presenters. Uh, Corpus Christi Sports Commission Executive Director, Mr. Joy Jewell. <laughs> City of Corpus Christi Councilman, Mr. Jim Klein. <laughs> ITTF Pre Vice President, Mr. Alaor Azevedo. <laughs> ITTF Americas President, Mr. Juan Villa. <laughs> USA Table Tennis CEO, Mrs. Virginia Sung. <laughs> ITTF General Secretary, Mr. Raul Colleen. <laughs> and now I would like to hand it over to Mr. Jim Klein to tell us a few words from the city of Corpus Christi. Thank you, Vlad. My name is Jim Klein. I'm a member of the Corpus Christi City Council. I want to uh, good evening and welcome to this award ceremony. On behalf of Mayor Paulette Guajardo, I'm honored to stand before you today to mark the first time this event has ever been held in our great city. I'd like to take this time to thank our fantastic community, the families of the athletes, and everyone who came out to support this incredible event. I'd also like to thank USA Table Tennis and the International Table Tennis Federation for choosing the Gulf Coast capital to host this event. It is amazing to see so many skilled athletes from all over the world come to our city to compete. We trust you had an unforgettable experience and Corpus Christi eagerly anticipates welcoming you back in the future. I extend my deepest gratitude to the organizers sponsors, volunteers, and everyone who contributed to the success of this championship. Your efforts have created an event that we will remember for years to come. In closing, I'd like to congratulate the athletes who have competed for a job well done. Your dedication and commitment to your sport inspires us all. Safe travels and thank you for making the 2024 ITTTF Para, Para US Open Championship an unforgettable experience. And, and now we'll begin with the men singles medalists. Bronze medal representing Ecuador, Alberto Minio. The award will be given by Mr. Joey Jewell, Executive Director of the Corpus Christi Sports Commission. You don't hand the entire thing, just, just, no, 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 not the entire thing, just the, just the price. Okay, and now take, take it back. Okay, you just give, you don't give the toy. Okay. Second place and silver medal representing Chile, Nicolas Burgos. The award will be given by Mrs. Virginia Song, CEO of USA Table Tennis. Gold medal and winner of the 2024 ITTF Pan Am Cup, representing Canada, Edward Lee. The award will be given by Mr. Juan Villa, ITTF America's president.
And now we want everybody to stand for the Canadian National Anthem. Thank you and congratulations to all our medalists. And now we would like to welcome our women's singles medalists to the podium. Third place and bronze medal goes to Mo Zhang, representing Canada. The award will be given by Mr. Raul Kalin, General Secretary of ITTF. Second place and silver medal goes to Amy Wong, representing USA. The world will be given by Mr. Jim Klein, Councilman of City of Corpus Christi. Gold medal and winner of the 2024 Pan Am Cup, representing Brazil, Bruna Takahashi. Hey, Bruna! The award will be given by Mr. Alfredo, ITTF Vice President. Now, please stand for the Brazilian national anthem.
So I moved 